Hey everyone, I'm Fiona. I'm here with my colleague, John. Um, we went to school together. Actually, we took a class together. We took Larry Polanski's class back in Santa Cruz years ago. And in this podcast, uh, John's gonna further explore the golden ratio and how to apply that to music if you're writing music or composing, um, all that good stuff. So yeah, John, can you uh, introduce yourself a little bit more? Yes, hi, I'm John and I took a upper division music compositional theory at uh, UC, UC Santa Cruz with Fiona years ago. And that's where we met. I was uh, wrapping up the, uh, the requirements for my degree at UC Irvine for biomedical engineering. Um, and me approaching this class, all I had is, is what I know. And so the way I viewed it, uh, the way that um, Dr. Larry Plansky was presenting things, it, it right away, uh, he was a, he had his bachelor's in mathematics and his PhD in music. And so he approached everything uh, from a math standpoint. And so I, I was able to relate to him at that level and, um, and it, it was good. And so this, everything I do here is, uh, is a result of just a little bit of interface I had with him. If, if I lived a thousand years or multiple lives, I would have loved to, to um, get a PhD in guitar, you know, guitar studies, right? Under Dr. Larry uh, Plansky. But uh, life, life is, you know, it's pretty short. Um, there's not enough time that you want to spend, but I would have loved to, to uh, got a PhD under him, but there's just, there was, there was no time. Uh, so it, it was, every day was, uh, it was uh, a privilege. It was, it, I learned a lot, very smart man. Um, and so yeah, that's my background now. I currently work for, for BioRad. I'm a field service guy. I go in and fix their machines and labs all over. So I get a lot of exposure. I see a lot of stuff. And the, uh, the science is always there. And so when I approach music, it's always with um, referencing everything I learned at UC Irvine. And uh, I've, taken, I've taken courses at UC Irvine just to graduate. It's another story. But uh, I finished. It took a long time. But uh, UC Irvine, UC Riverside, UC Davis, UC Santa Cruz. I, took, I was about to take one class at UCLA. Uh, the parking was horrendous. And I said, no, no. It is terrible. <laughs> it, it was. It was. So I've been to a lot of UCs um, just for my, my undergrad. I, I only have a bachelor's. That's all I have. Uh, it took a while. But um, I know the UC system very well. And uh, I've taken a lot of the, um, the undergraduate uh, uh, engineering courses, lower and upper division. So that was my background. And when I look at anything, whether it's fixing machines in the field or it's music, that's that's my core. That's that's my um, my lenses, if you will. It's based on that. So, um, yeah, that's my background. Awesome, cool. All right, so we're gonna jump into the golden ratio and how to apply that to music. Yes. And then I'll, I'll, I will share screens, right? Yeah. Let's see here. So when Fiona initially contacted me, she asked about the golden ratio you know, and how I would approach this. So this is it. And if you look at it, you know, it's a curve. It's like, all right, it's a spirally curve. Cool. There's math behind it here. There's, there's math here. Here's the coding behind it. One example. And I will also provide uh, MATLAB links here. And so the first step to, to address this is the way I would approach it is how do you analyze this is step one is, you know, for composers and creators is it's very complex. It sounds simple, but it's actually very complex. So you need to get an analog to digital lab on a, a proper lab. And these are pictures of what a lab should look like. It's, it's uh, it can be a very expensive hobby. It can be when you analyze uh, systems, when you analyze analog signals in general. Mm -hmm. And so when you strike a chord on a guitar, or if you were to play a violin, it produces a, a vibration that's a frequency. These, all these machines here, they pick them up. Uh, you can buy, there's analog versions of these, old school, there's digital versions of these oscilloscopes. Uh, there's, there's, uh, there's a lot here. 
and you can buy used. I recommend going on, you know, uh, online, buying used equipment instead of new, um, and also repairing these things. And that's another, you could build your own too, if you have that background, but this is a uh, analog to digital lab here is what you would need. And the next step would be after you have that appropriate hardware is then you would have to get MATLAB. And MATLAB, there's a lot of uh, engineering courses dedicated to just like one MATLAB toolbox. So MATLAB is a program and you can get add-ons toolboxes depending on what you're doing. Uh, you know, DSP stands for digital signal processing. Um, it's what, it's what, for example, like the NSA, the National Security Agency, they're all about DSP. That's, they're all about digital signal processing. Um, you can get PhDs and you can have guys that, that that's all they're known in that industry. Just they're, that's what they do, DSP. So it's its own world because digital signal processing. So what you're doing is you're taking an analog signal from a guitar and that produces a noise. You have to capture that and convert that from an analog to a digital signal. Once you have it, now you have to process that, that digital signal. And so that's, that's where, where we're headed. Um, so, you know, then, then strike a chord. Once you have your lab and it's not, it is a lab. It's a, it's a sound lab. It's, that's what it takes. Um, it's not um, rocking out in, in your garage is, is fun. It's cool. Um, this to, to, to appreciate this, you would have to turn your garage into a lab if you want to. And each one of these topics is a rabbit hole. Each one of these topics you can get a PhD in. Uh, so this is just an overview. And then what rabbit hole you decide to go into or how deep uh, is, would be you know, up, up to you. So once you have ideally your lab in your garage set up, you're ready to rock out. Now you want to approach it like a scientist, like an engineer. So you strike a chord. Right, and that's going to produce a noise. A strike a chord, plot Smith chart in a 3D with MATLAB. And so I provided, there's several links here that you can click on. And we'll go through some. And it goes into the, the Smith chart. And what's the Smith chart? We'll go here. So this is the Smith chart. And use the Smith chart as a guide to stay on the narrow path of coherence. Uh, you can stay... You can stray from this path, but you have to return to the center line. So in a, what, what the Smith chart is here is it's a way to, the Smith chart is you have your X and Y axis. And what they did here is in, in order to achieve impedance matching, they bend the axis on a curve. And so the center line of the Smith chart is where you want to to use as your reference point. So the orange line that you see on your screen here, that's where you want to come back to. Um, go here, sorry, I'll read this. So you want to strike a chord. When you strike a chord, you want to see where it falls in the Smith chart with your favorite, uh, I'm sorry, with your functions that you developed. If you develop curves from striking chords or frequencies, that have a curve that follows the golden ratio, then you will establish a coherence for music generation with respect to how we perceive music. Uh, different genres will equal different golden ratio curve systems. However, all the hits of music genres will follow this algorithm of golden ratio curves development along the Smith chart. It's all about projecting the music on the Smith chart software and developing music that will follow the curve of the golden ratio. So that paragraph there, it's, it's dense, there's a lot there, and that's pretty much the whole topic of this this conversation here is you have the golden ratio up here how do you make music off this we need a map and we need we need to plot this we need to be able to see this function and so we have the smith chart here this comes from signal analysis it comes from microwaves it comes from impedance matching there's a lot of applications for this and there's several websites which i'll go through the websites now and so there's a this slide here. So in a sense, we're, we're hijacking the Smith chart for our music generation application purposes. The Smith chart is used for impedance matching. It is a graph with the axis curve to separate the different parts of the signal. 
Uh, so if you look to the uh, actual chart itself, you'll see the green, red, blue circles on, I guess it would be our right, right? On the, I'm sorry, on, on our right, that I got from my YouTube video right there at the road in Schwartz. That's, that's the guys that made these. They have a nice series on this. And all these guys are, they're signals and systems, they're electrical engineers. They do a lot of stuff with, um, with arrays and networks that use this. But we're, we're taking this and we're using it for music generation. So because it's, it's the, the applications of it are, are, um, are vast and it, it's, it's, really, um, it's really far reaching. So the green, red, and blue circles to the right uh, that I got from the YouTube video, the Schwartz represent an input signal. For each, uh, for each input signal is a frequency or a note or a note. And so you imagine you have your lab and you strike a note. Once you get the, the hardware and the software down, you can be able to map it and, and actually see what that note looks like on this chart. We use this chart because it's curved, the X and Y axis, it can capture a golden ratio. So right now, if you strike a note, you will see a circle. Uh, you're trying to play notes with curves using this chart that mimic the golden ratio. And there's a lot of software for that. So this is going from the, so the hardware side all the way to the software side to signal analysis. So we'll break it down. So this is a signal, the, the green part, look at this. Uh, ideally, so this is, a, Z stands for impedance, it's matched, impedance is matched. And you can look at the slide here, uh, but what I will do is I'm gonna go to the actual links and explain to this in detail. So the Smith chart is used when making one point measurements, reflection, the coefficients. The Smith chart allows us to use the, the, uh, the, the relative impedances, allows for easy visualization of complex impedances, uh, individual points and traces. So the green dot's a point. The traces would be the, the signal itself. And so you can analyze complex signals and look at the curves. And that's what we're studying. So to actually break down the, the, the golden ratio as far as a like geometric telescoping series um, and, and as it telescopes down, you, you can break down that function and then you can understand it. But how do you take that, that signal, what nature uses? If nature uses something, we have to use it. Nature is tested through time and death. It's, it's the best engineer, right? I'm a religious man, I believe in God. And if, if nature uses something, uh, it's right. And so the, the best engineers just not steal, I guess, take from nature, right? If you want to make fins to swim, you'll look at a dolphin and you'll build fins. And you know, they've done this. They build fins based on what nature designed, you know, dolphin fin. Now you have really good fins. Uh, everything that went into the water flow, how it passes. And so for, for music generation, we have this beautiful function, the golden ratio, and we want to use that curve. So how do we develop music to get that curve? We luckily there's a, a chart that they use for microwave and signal and system analysis, and it's called the Smith chart. And so that's what we're gonna do. We're going to hook it up where we can strum on our guitar. It develops a noise, a frequency. We have software that picks it up. And as the software picks it up, it can then put it in a digital display and then we can adjust our notes and our music to try to hit that curve and develop music based on that. And the theory is here, the application of it, if you stay close to that orange line in the middle, that's the only straight line in the Smith chart, if you will, Smith chart, the only straight line. And the idea is if you play a uh, frequencies, but you come back to that orange line and the and if the curve can mimic of that note if the frequency and how how the software uh, uh reads it if they can develop a golden ratio and come back to the orange line it's going to sound good now different patterns will make different genres of music from you know rap reggae classical pop but this theory doesn't matter the genre if it comes back to the orange line it will be good will perceive it as good music. And so good music sounds like this. This is a, the Smith chart. This is it projected on a 3D. 
globe, if you will. And we'll go into the software for this here in a little bit. The, this here is good music. Now these are just circles. There's, there's, no, there's no golden ratio here in this. So this is a system, boom, right? You're gonna hear this. This could be several instruments, several chords. This is a slice of a moment in time of something you hear. And this would be good music, let's say, and this would be bad music. If you look, the signals, they go away. They don't come back to the center. There's no golden ratio curve being followed. It's a mess. It's in, it's in disarray. Uh, there's no coherence here. In order to achieve coherence, which is a major, a major theme, is you have to stick to the center of the line. And I actually wrote down coherence here. Let's see, where is um email myself coherence? Cool. So the, the light from a laser is said to be coherent, which means the wavelengths of laser light are in phase in space and time. So a laser is directional, a laser is monochromatic, and it's coherent. So coherent is very important. Uh, that's what you're trying to achieve when you make music is you want to be in phase with space and time. You want to be coherent. This chart, that orange line, the only straight line is coherence when you do music generation. You have to come back to it. If you don't come back to it, you're not going to have coherence. You need to, you need to return to it. And the curve itself, if you can mimic the way the path back to coherence, back to that orange line using the golden ratio here, it's going to sound good. The music will sound good. Nature nature dictates it they're, they're, it's a good design just like if you look at some uh some plants follow this design it's everywhere this is a good design and it's going to sound good to us so you want to have coherence meaning you want to return to the orange line you don't want to look like this but when you return to the orange line the name of the game is you want to follow this this is just a a, a uh, two-dimensional projection on a curve you can imagine this guy here, I grab this graphic, everything is sourced here, the yellow line. But of course you wanna to return to. And so if you can make your Smith chart utilizing the software, when you string your guitar and you can follow this, then you're gonna have good music. And that's a key, that's a tool that music composers can use to know if they're on track, if they're following nature's law, if they're in accordance with nature, if what they're saying would fundamentally just sound good. And there's different genres of music. There's, and what makes a hit? And the answer is this is what would make a hit. If you can follow these laws, it will make a hit. It's the vibrations, it's the frequencies, it's following the golden ratio on a curve. And it's mapped out on the Smith chart, which is a X, Y axis curved that was used to study impedance matching for microwaves and microwaves, sound vibrations, it's, it's all energy transduction and they follow the same, the same functions uh, in a sense. And so this is what you're trying to, trying to achieve. And how do we do this is, well, we have software. So I have all these links here and I pulled them up beforehand. You pull them here? Oh, I did. Okay, I'm gonna share this. I'm gonna stop sharing the screen here. Share screen, I'm gonna go here, share. Okay, cool. So there's software, like you don't have to sit there. It was funny when I was initially doing this, I was like, I had paper and a pencil and I'm drawing stuff out. And I'm doing like, like division and I'm doing like everything old school, like on paper. Like, uh. And then I realized like, just go to, just use MATLAB. MATLAB, these guys have everything. And so this is the golden, uh, golden section search optimization. So here, if you want to do a golden ratio, you can use MathWorks. You gotta, you gotta get MATLAB if you want to do this stuff. Mm. They make they make everything fast and easy so we scroll down here and they have a nice applet as you can see in the demonstration you can put in the values that you want and you can produce your function your curve and you'll know if your curve is right or if your curve is wrong 
and you see how the golden ratio is there in the squares and the red squares you see it's it's reducing things down to and it's segmenting things down to according to the golden ratio so you can see it there so this is the function that you're after you can install the toolbox and there's plenty there and this is just one you know one author made this mm -hmm. this this uh gentleman here and there there's plenty more the next one is you know plot smith chart data in the 3d matlab and so now you can get 3D visualization of your actual chords, your notes, your frequencies when you strum a guitar. This is the software side. There's a lot that goes on to this. Before you can even, you know, if you play your guitar, your computer's not gonna know what you're doing. And that's why I said, you have to build a lab. If you wanna do this right, you have to build a lab that can take in analog signals. And every studio engineer knows what I'm talking about. You know, if you're a studio engineer, you know what to do. Someone plays a guitar, they strum a note, and it's picked up and it's, it's analog signal. It's picked up by a digital system. That digital system puts it into data. Obviously it's digital. And then you can analyze that data. And this is a software that helps you analyze that data. So you can input your signal here. It's a frequency. And now it maps it out for you. And so what are we looking for when we have our signal and we overlay it on the Smith chart? We're looking for a golden ratio. We're looking for that curve. We want that curve. This is not that curve. What this sounds like, you know, you can you can play around to the end of time. There's so much variability here, but this is just a tool to see that to to use as a reference to make sure you stay on track. As long as you the center of the Smith chart you see here, as long as you converge back to that, don't diverge and go away. As long as you converge back to it, following the golden ratio, the music will sound good. And you see here, these are various signals and various systems that are that you can play on this. This is just a projection with the actual system, the input overlaid on top of. So, and here's all, all the coding, all the scripted, it's, it's online here. A lot of it's free. And here's the coding, just copy paste. You don't even have to be a computer scientist, just copy paste the code. They'll walk you through it, those forums. Here's all the functions you need. So everything you need is right here to do this. I got the pictures uh, of the lab right the ideal lab right here right that's what some of these dudes are garages wow and um electrical engineers music hobbyists if you're a music hobbyist you have to have this mm. um if you're like ham radio guys they have this too and so it's it's funny when you see the intersection between an electrical engineer a ham radio enthusiast a guy has like a literally a radio shack a radio shack where you have a, you have a shed in the backyard and you have your radios in the old days right and you build your you would tinker and build your radio and you would try to um, try to talk to people, ham radio guys. Like, I mean, they get so crazy that like, depending on where the moon is, they can bounce a signal. I'm not making this up. It sounds crazy. You can bounce a signal off the moon, apparently and talk to somebody else in a ham radio, like the really skilled guys. It's its own world, another rabbit hole. So, but ham radio guys, they look like their shed looks like this. Wow. Uh, electrical engineers will look like this too. Circuit designers, circuit analysis guys. Um, and if you want to use the golden ratio and go from analog to digital, you have to have this too, because this is all in your brain. And so like when you're playing, this whole workshop is in your head. This is the input. This is the processing, all this machines, and then you output. And so when you're jamming, you don't need all this, you're jamming. But when you're trying to methodically slow things down and break it down, you have to have a lab that can take an input, you can take an analog signal, process it, turn it into a digital signal, and then using the software, uh, render the result you want. And that's what these guys do. And here's all the coding for it. All it's, it's, it's all out there. Obviously the greens and notes, all the functions. And so here's uh, here's some more. And it's so, you know, microwave journal, 3D Smith chart tool is now free to all students. Cool. Uh, there you go. And so now, when you develop a function, a signal, boom, you develop a signal, you can now input that signal with the software into a graphical representation of that on the Smith chart. And that's the idea. And how do you get, how do you get a golden ratio on this, on this globe, on this map? You know, it's, it's play good music. And that's the software tuning. Uh, so ideally, when you strum something, if you, if you can, if you can daisy chain 
your hardware and the software and you get your functions working. Everyone's lab's gonna be different. But if you can do this, you can imagine the screen being live and you have a globe and you're just trying to jam and you're trying to make the golden ratio on this globe here. And that's what you're trying to do. And that's the whole point of this. That'd be cool. You can sit there and jam and rock out and, and you'll see the curves. You'll see the chords, all the notes, and the frequencies being mapped out mm -hmm. on this, this, this uh, coordinate system. It's just a curved coordinate system. You know, it's not, you have elliptical coordinate systems, you have spherical coordinate systems, you have, there's a lot of really complex coordinate systems where, where um, after several matrices, it, the, the mapping's not one-to-one, -one. it goes over so many transformations. This is pretty basic. It's just, you're curving things. And if you can make it where you're jamming, and as you're jamming, you can string a note, boom, and you see that note come to life on the computer, and you're trying to get that curve. And then you can tweak the values and functions and parameters in the software to help bend that curve. And then you can start jamming and you can, and then you can start getting a, and it's a relationship between you and the software and the parameters that you put in where you can start making the music. The, I don't, I don't think you could, the math doesn't lie. You can't, you, I don't, I don't believe that you can force, uh, you cannot force that curve it's going to sound good or not. You can make it where, where the, the boundaries are narrowed down to what you're playing. And then you can actually start seeing if it's accurate, if there's a curve. But once you get your system in sync and hooked up where you play a note, it's picked up, it's processed, and it's run through the software, MATLAB toolboxes on the Smith chart, and it's plotted in real time, you know, real time analysis, then you can actually start tuning your instruments and your style to get the curves that you want that would match the golden ratio. Uh, the 3D Smith chart here, 3D Smith chart. And this is it, you know, it's just, uh, here's the two dimensional, here's a projection of it. And then that's what you're trying to achieve is you're ultimately trying to achieve that, that golden ratio curve. And there's, there's, inf there's infinite curves. There's, there's so many different curves. You're looking at some here. There's so many curves, but you're looking for a specific curve. And so how you achieve that specific curve, that's your tool as a music composer is, you know what, I'm getting some good curves. I like it. They're returning back to the, the center line, that orange line, back to the orange line, but it, it doesn't follow that ratio. What's the problem? You have to adjust your chords, your style, your timing, um, maybe the, the movements. You have, to, you have to adjust that to get to achieve that curve. Um, and that's your guide. And so the curve is not going to come to you. You have to adjust yourself to start jamming using that curve. And it's a tool. So it's a visual tool, a visual reference to know where you are. And if you're playing just bad music, you sh it'll, it'll just be, it won't, it, there'll be no coherence. There'll just be random static noise, just screeching. And it'll, it's just sharp lines will go everywhere. But when you're jamming, you'll start seeing the curves and that's how you know you're good when you get good curves. And if you could jam and you're just hitting golden ratios, it's like a really cool game of rock band. Ideally, once you have your setup, then, then, you know, you're jamming. And so these are the websites and I posted them here. Um, the software's there in MATLAB and, and it's a matter of building your lab and it is, it's approaching music as a scientist. Um, and you're going to have to get good at systems there's a lot of codes out there that already exist. You can copy paste. And so you have different blocks. You're modulating each block from the hardware component to the software component to the, the instruments you're playing. Um, and you're, of course, you know, in the studio, you're limiting noise, feedback, all these things as well. Good principles. A good sound engineer should be able to set this up pretty, you know, they already have everything kind of set up. And they go, oh, cool. And they can just, you know, start playing with this. Um, but that's, that's the the uh I'll stop sharing screen here and then i will share screen here this guy wait yeah so that's how you can take this math function if like you know i want to make i don't care if you want to make a symphony i want to make a symphony i want to make a a three chord simple three minute song track based on this this particular function that's how you can do it
you can use a SNP chart, you can use a software, you can use digital, uh, DSP, digital signal processing, you can go analog to digital uh, to make that happen. And the math is there. And it's cool because the math exists, the computer understands. And so you can start jamming live. There's other functions. This is the only curve. There's way more curves, but this is like the superior curve in nature. So this is like, this should be the backbone of everything. It should be based off this. And then you can go, the cool thing is you don't have to be a mathematician. You can jam on other functions because you're trying to hit that curve. And you can imagine the, uh, there's other software too. You can analyze signals and you know you can show the difference in between. And so that's, uh, that's how you, you use the golden ratio to, to generate music into what's appeasing. It's you're using the concept of coherence to get this, uh, uh, this is called the reactant, the reactance axis. And so you're trying to make a curve to go back to the reactant axis that follows the golden ratio. And that's, that's the name of the game. Let's see, was there anything else here? No, that's um, that pretty much, yeah, that, that covers it. And so there's a lot there. And, you know, if you go, all right, John, well, what would you do? What would you build in, in your garage? And um, right now the, uh, the, the garage is, uh, is, you know, I told you about, you know, the, uh, this is the plug for 925 Studio right off the floor. And so the garage currently is, is to develop, um, uh, strength and, and things and lifting. It's a gym for, for jujitsu fighting. Uh, but if I were to, to do this, it would, it would, uh, it would definitely take up a 10 by 10 room and the, the equipment to do it right. So that would be another, another podcast mm -hmm. on, on the, the cheap end versus the high end. You know, if you had no budget versus if you had like the government an unlimited budget, what would you do? And it'd be fun to do both kind of build outs. Like this is the minimum you could do. And actually get some get some software working where the software talks to each other, um, and that that would be fun to do. But this is the overall concept of how to apply the golden ratio uh, to music generation. And so yeah. maybe maybe in the future, if you wanted to, um, I could do some some work and, and see what software packages I would do, what hardware I would get, make a list of what I would recommend, uh, where someone could do like a, almost like a plug and play system where you get you get the the modules you need, you know, your recording equipment here, they can take the signal in of your guitar, uh, hook it up to computer, how to process it, uh, the software involved in that, the packages, what scripting and coding to put in to upload um, into that, where you can actually start, that would be, um, that would be, that would take me maybe, you know, like a month. Just okay. to it, so yeah, no, it'd be really cool to hear your take on all of that. Um, I really, yeah, I really appreciate all of this. And I think when I think about composers that have kind of used this golden ratio in their music, I guess the main thing that that, that it the takeaway is is the coherence that that reactance access is. Do composers go back to that main theme or that main idea to kind of keep the whole piece coherent? I'm just thinking more of like a abstract way of like because I, I don't have the software yet, but it's apparently it's free for students, so I'll, I'll try downloading it. There's, yeah, there's, so there's MATLAB. MATLAB is, is sometimes free for students and there's toolboxes. And then, uh, well, that was, I believe it was a, a toolbox that you, someone made that you could add to. And so there's, there's so many different, uh, it, it would be like a word processor. How many word, pro there's, you know, there's Google, right? They have their own word processor. There's WordPad, Microsoft. It was also Microsoft Word. So it's, uh, but, you know, just like languages, these things, you know, they don't sometimes communicate. There's, a, there's an issue. Mm. Uh, they're, they're different languages. And so the, the biggest thing there, as far as software is concerned, is making sure each module communicates and talks and they're, they're aware of. And even when for larger systems, um, uh, I, I won't name companies, but there's a lot of issues internally where they make, uh, they make hardware and software and they don't communicate. And and uh, they should, but they don't communicate. That that's another that's another issue. So, setting up a system where um, where the communications would be, um, uh, you would have to. But this is already solved because you have vendors, you have software vendors that work with other vendors, and so the languages will merge, and it, it's it wouldn't be hard to do uh, to look up. So, yeah, see. Uh, 
you know, what they call in the microwave world, an array analysis and antenna world, reactant access is you don't want to stray from that. You want to come back to, you want to come back to, if you deviate from that, you're just going to hear, imagine someone just like, like a, a little kid just jamming on a hitting, hitting um, uh, keyboards on a key or some, someone just playing a guitar randomly picks it up. They have no idea. It's in complete disarray. So mm -hmm. you want to come back to that for that to achieve that that harmony and what's appeasing and and why is it and it's because nature flows nature likes curves and that's your reference point and if you can come if you can leave that reactance access using the goal of ratio but come back to it that moment in time from start to finish is going to be very pleasing to the ear if you can leave with the golden ratio and come back to so Mm, okay, so this is a question. Could you technically make a noise experimental noise song piece of music where it follows the golden ratio? Yes, of course. It's an input signal. Yes. Mm, but it just has to keep going back to that main point, keep going back to that. It has to for the golden ratio, it would have to it, it would you would you would produce a signal that would have to follow that curve and go back to the reactive axis, yes. So it doesn't matter what materials you're using, you just have to- No. Talk. Yes, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yes, correct. Uh, no, that's good, that's good. That's really cool. This, it's your map. This, this would be your map, um, trying to develop that curve. And it wouldn't, ma yeah, that, that is absolutely correct, yes. In theory, yes, that's right. Awesome. Well, very cool. Um, thank you so much, John. That was very informative and very uh, inspiring. So yeah, um, if people want to get in touch with you, how should they uh, contact you? They can uh, they can go to nine two five studio <laughs> off the uh, off the four freeway right there next to Kinders, and they can put on a gi, open mass Sunday, and 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 we can uh, we can roll, we can do jujitsu, or they can uh, Jonathan Haley at gmail dot com uh, is my email address. I, I I'm not on I'm not on. Uh, I left Facebook like 2000, I think it was 2010 because oh. my, my Marine buddies, I, I never did anything. I, I, I was stateside. I was never deployed. I, I, I didn't do anything. Um, there's nothing there, but my Marine buddies and my, uh, my grandma were, were, they could see each other. This 2010. And so when I saw that, I realized this isn't good. So I left Facebook because I don't want those guys being able to have a conversation with my grandma so <laughs> I, I right away i saw the complications i'm like i'm out this is like 2000 no 2008 2010 i think it was like 2008 yeah like 2010 so just jonathan hately at gmail.com i'm always at 925 studio uh in concord i'm there every every day uh, i'm the guy that opens up at the front desk saturday sunday and um so if, but if you wanted to contact me, email, uh, or my phone number is, is, um, you know, 949-572-5076. And you can call me and, and just mention, if you mention Fiona, I'm like, oh, right, cool, cool. I'll know where, you know, where you're coming from right away. So that's <laughs> the best way to, to get in contact with me. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you so much, John. Um, I think definitely we could do another continue along on this because I'm just, just very curious just to see yeah. how this unfolds. Yeah, hardware and software setup would be cool just to, to make a lab, you know, make a beat lab would be cool where um, you can start jamming and uh, you can you have a reference to know if you're good or bad, you know, mm -hmm. just all the sphere. Yeah. Great. Awesome. Awesome. Very cool. Okay. Thank you so much, John. We'll see you. Right. We'll see you next time. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye. Bye. Thank you.